Happy Halloween. It's about a week before Halloween. It's the full moon before the holiday and I thought we'd play a little bit of organ music. Of course you probably recognize both of those tunes being Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor and of course Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter. In fact we're gonna go completely nerdy today and talk Harry Potter and you may not know but I'm like the huge Harry Potter nerd. I've got my books all stacked up back here including a rare first edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and well how am I gonna be able to tie this into wind band music? Well I thought we'd do a sorting ceremony and well let's just sort all of our wind band instruments into the four Hogwarts houses. So in order to do that, I've taken some notes. And I went to Pottermore.com and I read up on each of the houses. Now, of course, I know what the houses are, but I want to get the official description. And I've written down the three descriptor words that Pottermore gives of each house. And we'll start off with Gryffindor. Probably the most well-known of the houses because it, of course, houses our three heroes. And it is characterized by bravery, courage, and determination. And of course we have Slytherin, which is characterized by being uh, proud, pride, ambitious, and cunning. And we have Hufflepuff, patience, loyalty, fair play, and I'll add to that hard work. And Ravenclaw, wit, learning, and wisdom. Well, we're going to take a look at the 10 different instruments that we have in the wind band. We're not going to look at percussion today. We may look at percussion in a future video, but I just want to look at the 10 standard instruments in the wind band. Now, when I say 10, I'm grouping all members of one family under a umbrella. So all the saxophones are grouped together. All the clarinets are grouped together. So let's start at the top of the score. We have our flute and our piccolo. Now, in order to be fair on this flute and piccolo, we're going to look at the instruments and their roles themselves and maybe get a little bit of influence from the players who play them. Now, of course, we can have players on all four houses on these instruments, but let's take a look at the flute itself. It's the highest instrument. It has the most notes. It, well, it does the most daring things. And flute players are the most adventurous of all the woodwind players in pursuing new music, new techniques, and therefore, well, this is about as clear of a Gryffindor is I know. Next, let's move to the oboe. And with the oboe, we're going to pair it with our bassoon, just to hit all the double reeds together. And I don't know about you, but the characteristic I think of when I think of double reeds is brains. It takes a lot of brains to be able to play oboe or bassoon. A lot of study. Wit and wisdom. Ravenclaw. Let's move down a little bit and go to our clarinets. In the wind band, there are more clarinets than there are any other instrument. They have all sorts of different sizes. They take on all sorts of different roles and they are the hardest working instruments in the wind band. They take on the most roles, they do the hardest jobs, and they don't complain about it because they know that's their job. Hard work? You know what? This is a Hufflepuff. I can't think of a better Hufflepuff than the clarinet in all its various sizes.
lastly among the woodwinds, we have our saxophones. They're nearly as determined and adventurous as the flutes are. They work hard, but you know what? They're going to be determined, aren't they? I'm thinking our saxophone is a Slytherin. Proud. Don't ever insult a saxophone in front of a saxophonist. Slytherin. So that covers our woodwinds. Let's move on to brass and we'll go to horn. Obviously I don't have a horn. Now horn is where we get to something called a hat stall. At least it is for me. If you don't know, a hat stall is where the sorting hat takes over five minutes to determine what house a student should be in. It only happens very rarely. Professor McGonagall was a hat stall. Now, the horn, the first thing we think of when we think of horn is being heroic and bold. But playing the horn requires more study than any other brass instrument. It requires more smarts. So it's a hat stall between Ravenclaw and between Gryffindor. So what's the answer? In this case, I am going to lean toward Ravenclaw. Why? Because the horn player has to do all this study and learning and practice. They have a deeper well that they can draw from. So the horn, Ravenclaw. Let's go to trumpet. I cannot think of an instrument more ambitious, more cunning, and more willing to do anything that they can to get to the top, whether it's the top of the ensemble, the top of the chord, the top of the range. I cannot think of a better Slytherin than the trumpet. The word trombone literally means big trumpet. So we could think that, well, the trombone should be in the same family, but it doesn't have the same ambition that the trumpet does. But it is brave, it's loud, it's bold, it's Gryffindor. And finally, we have the tuba and the euphonium. They are brother and sister to one another. They are a tenor tuba and a contrabass tuba. And these are good-natured instruments. They support the rest of the band. They work hard. They are Hufflepuff. Now, I'm gonna leave the comments open on this video. Yes, I know the lighting in here is bad. You probably can't see too well. I was trying to go for a little bit more ambiance with candlelight and organ music and Halloween stuff. But I am gonna leave the comments open on this video and I want to hear what do you think what house do you think these instruments should go into? Do you disagree with what I say? We'll figure it out in the comment section. So let me know what you think and what instrument should go into what house. I should have at least one more Halloween video to do before October 31st.